Welcome everyone. Today we are going to have a first look at Domino V10 and specifically the Domino DB module for Node.js. And we are here to specifically ask the question, is it going to leave you angry and disappointed? Uh, so I'm Graham in Vancouver and uh, I'll let the other guys introduce themselves. Colin? Colin Breckles with Castlebreck in Ontario. Hi, Heike Void with um, Harbourlight from Halifax. Excellent. So uh, Colin and Heiko have done some demos with the beta version of the Domino DB module that is available today. So you as a uh, user of these, this awesome technology are able to log into the IBM site and uh, uh, sign up for the beta. Uh, and once you get uh, added to it, you'll be able to uh, log into their connections cloud community and download the code uh, and do an install. So what we're going to show you today is two slightly different riffs on the exact same demo. Um, there is a Domino uh, database that's included with the beta and instructions on how to do the install. The guys have followed the instructions exactly to the letter and then did a little bit of customization on how they wanted to show this demo. So we're going like, to leave each of them to, um, to show that. But, but basically, this is straight out of the box. No, no changes to the configuration or anything like that. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Colin, and uh, he's going to set us up for the first demo. All right, Colin, over to you. All right, so I'm sharing my screen here. And uh, there's there's a local um, install of, of the node packages and, and, and the project um, remotely on the Domino server. Uh, there's a, an NSF and the Proton task. So as part of the download, they actually give you this database. Um, and it's got a whole bunch of different types of documents. And in this case, one of them is, is, is contact documents. Um, since I had to do a, a small data extraction <laughs> test task, I actually decided to use this and to create a standalone code sample. I thought it would be nice to use the database that you get as part of the download. So here it is. Um, so pr pretty straightforward. I'm not going to go over the data too much except to say that um, in my case, I did a quick install. Uh, didn't go as far as setting it up for security. It's not a public-facing server. In fact, it's just a development server that's not even left um, running and it's not available outside the firewall. So on the server, you've got the Proton task running. On the client, you create your node um, project. And the DominoDB node module um, gets installed into your project. So there's the organization name and uh, node module name, so DominoDB being the module. And that will be in the public node registry later. So you'll be able to do an NPM install. Uh, right now, it's not. Right now. Uh, they actually provide it to you as part of the download of, of DominoDB, and you can just install it locally using NPM from your file system. It's all in the docs. They did a good job, um, and in general, they did a good job. I was pleasantly surprised that in terms of it downloading it, setting it up, didn't take very long to install the server task um, or to, to get to a, a local project going. So that said, we're in a very small project here. There's a single JavaScript file, index.js. It's a command line program. All it's going to do is connect to that remote server, um, query the database using Domino query language, and output the results to the console. So to do that, first we require the Domino DB node module. A couple JavaScript objects. One is our server config. So you can see here's a host name, pretty straightforward. We've got a server called Domino 10. We've got uh, the connection info uh, with the port. Now you notice there's no security here. This is anonymous, it's, it's insecure. Uh, so this is just for dev. You would never do this on a prod server. Um, database config, what do we want? So this node demo.nsf, that's the database I was showing. That's the one that uh, they provide you as part of the download. And read options is an object where we can pass a DQL query. So this is Domino query language. You can, looks, looks pretty um, straightforward, and it is. In this case, we're gonna find all documents where the forum's contact and the last name is Garner. Let's take a quick look at the notes database. I believe there's three of them. So there's three garners. Um, we should get uh, three results back. We use server passing in the server config JavaScript object we looked at previously to find up here. And we, we're using promises. So a async wait, we'll, we'll uh, get the server back. And then we'll tell the server to use the database. And we're gonna call bulk read documents on it, passing in read options. 
So read options being this JavaScript object with the query. And coming back to the query, we will specify specific item names. So I'm only taking two of them. There's a bunch more notes items on the documents than those, but we're only taking first name and last name. And we'll get uh, a document back, log it, and we can also, this is a neat one. I, I wanted to try to use a specific document. So here I, I grabbed the UN ID of the document out of the database and, and passed that. And, and once again, we'll log that. So let's, uh, let's go for it. Let's run this and, and take a look. Um, if, if anything went sideways, in my case, the, the catch is just going to put to the console. So let's run it. And you'll see. Pearl Garner, Leo Garner, and Brandy Garner. And the, 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 again, first name and last name is the two uh, item names that I specified um, in the query. In addition, you'll get back the UN ID um, and an object with info about creation and modification. Um, you'll also, the, the wrapper object has some additional info, so errors and document range and whatnot. Um, this is the document that uh, I, I got by UN ID. Um, so that's where I'm logging doc zero up here and do it going about it a little bit differently. And uh, doc response is saying database.use document and, and passing in the UNID. So that said, pretty easy to send a query, tell it what you want, which documents you want back, which notes items you want from those documents. Um, and, it, and it runs quickly. And I was pleasantly surprised. And Heiko will take it a step further and show you a little bit more about security and integrating it into an app. Over to you, Heiko. Thanks, Colin. Um, okay, so um, I just came up with a little slide because, well, we didn't have slides yet, so I, somebody has to show some, right? So it's up to me today. So just to give you a quick impression of what I have here, um, I have a Domino server installed that starts from the right, which is my Domino server right here. It has the Proton add-in task installed, as Colin described already. Um, and, um, and when I talk to this server, it, talk, it is also um, using an Nginx uh, reverse proxy in front of it to deliver, for example, HTTP requests to, the, to a specific client. We're not going to do this today. Um, because um, my note part that I'm showing will be on my Mac. So I just put that right on here. Uh, I have created a small, a very, very small and tiny um, Express application uh, that uh, links to DominoDB features and functions. And the communication between uh, this node part and the Domino server will be uh, dealt through uh, SSL encryption. Um, there are two steps that you have to take on that. You have to, first of all, you have to enable the Proton task to uh, make use of SSL, which is done by creating a certificate on the server. And then you have, need a client certificate in your application uh, that needs to be created separately. Thankfully enough, HCL and IBM came up with um, all the, the scripts that you need to create those certificates on your own. These are self-signed certificates, which is not a bad thing in this, in this case because it's only uh, securing a server-to-server -server communication. It's nothing that will ever go out to a client per se. So you never see these, these certificates showing up in a client browser or in an application outside um, of that. Uh, so from that perspective, this works well. So you have, you, have to, you have to import then a client certificate into a specific nodes and Domino user on your server, which will then interact as the Trojan horse, so to speak, to talk to your database through that user access. So you can have a user, a user object that you can actually refer to in your ACL in your database to lock down the, the uh, security from, on the Domino side on what your user actually is able to do. The caveat on this is currently this is not multi-user. This is only one user that has access. It needs to has, have access to all your applications that you want to access. This is coming in a later beta version. There's, uh, there's something for more personalized security in that area. Um, but for today, it's like you have one technical user that actually does secure access to your applications. So that's what I'm showing today. Um, the, the protocol that those two are talking, Domino and Proton, is gRPC. This is a standard in the Java world. I just copied the um, the uh, the URL for for those who are interested in a small picture in here, so you can just look that one up. 
how, how this is done if you're interested in the protocol. Anyways, okay, long, long, long story. Now let's get to, like, let's get to, to, to the beef. And um, I, have, I, I will be using the same um, application that Colin showed. Um, so if you, for example, look for, for Garner, we will see well, probably, no, this is Garner, not Garner. We'll see the same three Garners that we have here. Um, my application will be doing it a little, uh, doing a, a couple of things differently than what Colin's applications did. Uh, what Colin's application did. Okay, let me just stop demo here. Oh. Let's do that first and then start the server. Otherwise, you won't see the code. Okay, so uh, we see pretty much the same thing. I, I created a, a small express application. Uh, so this will act as, a, as a, a web server as well. More likely to be like an, an API front end that you could use to access uh, a notes application in the back end, right? Um, the application basically exposes a couple of API, a couple, a couple of routes in there in, in its um, HTTP requests. So I can have a GET request that goes to my homepage, more or less, which only uh, renders out a, a, a small information of what this application is about to do and how to call it. And I also have a, um, a subroute uh, for API write that actually does the interaction between um, the write, write operation on the, on the database itself. What I want to do today is I want to create uh, the three contacts of the guys that are on the call today in this application that Colin already showed. So I have a, um, a JSON object that has my uh, items that I need to, to put in. This is Collins, Graham's, and mine, my address data. And currently we're using the same notion as Colin did. We have the, the, the get request from the API whenever that happens. We use our server config, we open the database, uh, we create a response object, and uh, do a, a bulk create documents operation, which is part of the API. Currently, and uh, we hand that over our um, JSON object to uh, create the documents. Then we will get uh, a couple of un Domino unique IDs from the, the documents back, and we'll console lock them and send them out to the browser so the user can see, okay, um, there have been documents created. If anything goes sideways, we catch the error and send that out, and then we start the application and listen to a, to a default port, which is port 3000. And um, so let's start the app now and see. Um, okay, so it tells us it's listening on port 3000. And when I just click on my localhost machine, that's my machine here, you see my default write up. I will, documents can be created using API write, and that's what I'm going to do. Before I, hit, before I hit return, let's just make sure we don't have any Grahams or Collins in the database currently. Oh, there is one. Oh, there is. Okay. Let's remove him quickly. So I can show you at least that this is working later on. There you go. And um, we're back on track. Uh, okay, so let's write the documents. When I click a term, you see documents created, and I get, for those who are familiar with Domino Unique IDs, these are three new documents that are, have been created here. And when I click search again, we'll see no, call it. Okay. Okay, that's Graham Acres. Here you are, Vancouver. Let's check out. Uh, let's check out. In uh, yeah, that's this is you. So uh, the documents have been created. Oh, I had to. I have, to have hit. Had to hit refresh to get you to get the the, the page reloaded from the Domino server. Anyways, so this is what, how how you would be able to create updates in a database. Also, what, what, what's on top of that? I mentioned that I used TLS for, um, for uh, communication. My server configuration uh, that, I, that I use currently is uh, looking a little bit different than Collins. You see that I have a couple of more things that I read. These are my certificate files that get created from the sample code that is already part of the app dev pack that you will get. Um, this is the, the, common, uh, uh, the common key that I, that I have to use. This is my um, um, private key, and this is the, uh, 
uh, the application key that I have to import. All of these components get created for you uh, within the scripts. Feel free to change these scripts to your according needs, whatever whatever feels fine for you. They're well, they're very well documented, and you should find your way through these scripts to create all of these certificates and keys pretty easily. The same thing applies then to the server config. We have our host name for the server. We have a port that the, the, that the Proton task is running at, and we all and we add in the credentials, which are these these three files that we import here. And those certificate files are part of my project structure right here, so they're just imported into the project. And that's literally it, how you set up your secure communication, um, encrypted and authenticated. Um, one thing you have to note, if you want to talk um, SSL to the Proton server, you have to have the client certificates as well. There's no way of talking uh, SSL protocol without authentication. That's something that's part of the demo as well, of the, of the, of the package as it is right now. So literally, uh, that's part of the, the things that I had to show. So you, you, you can read documents, you can create documents, you can manipulate them. That's a lot of things you have to do and you can do. And the, the way I think to operate with those things is pretty straightforward. It's not really complicated. And if you look at the, at the source code right here, I think that's quite readable for what it does behind the scenes. Excellent. Thank you. Um, I guess uh, one other thing that we should note is uh, that this is a Linux environment, right? These Domino servers are Linux servers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. in both our so cases, uh, Domino's on Linux, but in Heiko's case, he's running the Node.js part on his Mac. And in my case, I'm running on a virtual machine running Windows. Um, could have just as easily run it on a local Mac. So anywhere Node runs, your Node or Express app could run. Cool. Okay, so the big question, you guys, what do you think? Did this leave you angry and disappointed, Colin? No, not at all. It was a, it was a pleasant experience. And, and I'd have to say for a first look, it uh, felt pretty good. Cool, all right. And Heiko, what about your experience? Yeah, of course, I'm German, so it left me angry and disappointed. <laughs> no, You're angry all the kidding. time. I'm just kidding. No, no it, was, it was really, it was a good experience. It was easy to install. The documentation is really, really well done. Helps you, along, helps you along with everything that you might run into. Um, and um, from that perspective, it was a bit frustrating. It was just, it was just working, right? There's no, there was no, no, like, no hacking around, no fooling around. It was just like, okay, yeah, you could use that. And, and I mean, yeah. the, the big thing about this is you can do so much more with Node that's, up and that's, that's now up to the task. So um, this part will only be a very small part of an application. So you, will, you probably it will be... A, a teeny tiny bit of, of, a, of a big application that's uh, about to happen, right? So as a first look, this was a very, very good experience. I guess the other thing to make note of, of course, is that it, this is a beta program. So for people who do sign up, you're expected to participate in the beta. So it, certainly if you have any experiences that are frustrating, uh, by all means, feedback, uh, feedback back to IBM and HCL um, so that we can make this an even better product. So, all right, gentlemen, well, thank you very much. Any other quick thoughts? Oh, more to come. We, more stuff yeah. coming from C3UG along this vein and others. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Remember, click the bell uh, in YouTube so that you can get notified of uh, future videos from C3UG. And certainly for those who uh, are interested, uh, we don't send out a lot of email, but um, by all means, you're welcome to go to c3ug.ca and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, we probably send the message uh, once a quarter or so, but it keeps you up to date on what's going on. Um, and any blog that we post, which we do talk about these videos, uh, shows up on planetlotus.org as well. Thanks everybody for watching. Have a good day. Bye everyone. Bye.